What's going on guys? Chris here with Clutter Reduction Junk Removal and today we are removing a large copier from a household along with a few smaller ones. The industrial ones always kind of give me a little bit of a problem. They're overall pretty heavy plus they have the little castle wheels on the bottom it makes it kind of hard to use the hand truck and there is no top heavy low heavy it's just heavy all together and it's just always such a pain. Plus everywhere you grab, it just kind of rips off or opens a drawer or something. So you'll watch me struggle a little bit with pulling these out. But this client was very happy towards the end of it. She was telling me that she's gonna use me again and again and again because they're going through the garage that you saw in the picture and they're gonna be doing little baby steps at a time. So that I'm likely gonna be coming back to grab whatever little bits that they end up needing to get rid of. And they also have a storage in it that they need to get cleaned out and have a few pieces uh, brought back. So definitely some repetitive business in the future. So right now I'm just going through and I basically want to scrap it because it's a 200 pound unit. And they said that it's broken in a few different ways and that the repairs for it was pretty insane. And I've tried selling these copiers in the past and just in my area, they just don't sell very well. And it's just a big piece to kind of keep around. So I'm basically just removing all the shelling. And then my goal is to pull out any uh, CPUs, thick wires, and just try to remove some of that plastic outer shell so that way the scrapper doesn't give me any issues when I go by with it. But yesterday is something I kind of wanted to talk about. We went to a networking event that was held by a realtor and I found it through Eventbrite, which we've talked about in the past on the channel. And I met a realtor, a marketer, and a videographer, and I got some good insights and some tips regarding the business that I wanted to go ahead and share with you guys. So I'll go ahead and put that in towards the end. So stay tuned for those tips. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and plug the realtor's information in the description. He is local to South Florida if you guys live down here. He has a YouTube channel with I think about 5,000 subscribers. And I was actually telling him how one of my goals when I hit 1,000 was to start doing lives and interviewing other business owners and kind of talking about you know, what it is that got them into business, how they operate, stuff like that. Because I think at the end of the day, everyone markets and does everything the same. You're just pushing a different product to service. So I'm going ahead and wrapping up this little section here and then we will talk about those tips. Right, guys. So as far as a networking event goes, I wanna talk about some of the tips I learned and then how I like to pursue these events in action and kind of looking into them in the future and the ways I like to try to build the connections. So right off the back, Eventbrite, I've talked about it before in some of my other videos as far as marketing and networking goes. I will put it down in the description, but I do recommend checking it out no matter what area you're in. I believe it's throughout the country, but it's a very beneficial app that can show you networking events, uh, business workshops, seminars, webinars, volunteer events that may just be good for getting your business out there in public. So I would recommend checking it out. The one I went to last night was hosted by a realtor who is local and has a YouTube channel as well. And I was kind of just talking to him a little bit about YouTube and then we were talking about um, just some of the things he's been going around and doing with the networking events and he tries to do like once a month. So that would be kind of cool to continue going to. He had a pretty good turnout so I'm assuming they're all like that. Um, I also ran into a marketer who actually just emailed me about following me up and doing coffee at some point, which is perfect because I was going to message her later this afternoon as well. And that's one of the things to do is make sure you're following up with the connections you make. Don't just hand someone your card and like never talk to them again. You know, you want to actually follow up and remind them that you're here. And then the videographer I was talking to gave me some good pointers that I found to be very helpful and I think they'll help you guys out as well. So. As far as the events go, I try to make it a point to walk away with at least three connections. Not so much like here's my card, take my card, blah, 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 but actually getting to know somebody to where if I were to go to the store right now and see them, I could be like, oh, hey, John, how are you doing? Funny running into you here. I'm like, oh, hey, Chris, it was nice meeting you last night. And you could pick up a conversation again. So. I try to build those kind of relationships and I'm not the best. I'm not the most extroverted. My girlfriend definitely carries a lot of the weight in our relationship when it comes to, um, you know, chit chatting to people we don't know. But once I get into a topic I'm familiar with, like junk removal, I can actually be quite, you know, talkative. So 
it's definitely a learning curve for me as well and definitely something I'm getting more and more comfortable doing. And I've learned from the realtor last night that the best thing they do at these networking events is just go talk to anything, like everyone. So for example, last night he introduced us to a videographer. If I had known he was a videographer, I probably wouldn't have approached him myself because I don't have a specific need for that. I don't have the budget to hire a videographer that's gonna charge you know, 500 bucks an hour to do something or more. Like there's one, I know a guy who charges $3,000 for two hours of work. He does really great work, but $3,000 is a lot of money. And I'm not saying you can't get results from doing something like that, but it's just not in my budget. So, you know, I do want to do like a 15 to 30 second ad at some point in the future, like a video ad kind of showing me like arriving at a job, bringing out some big pieces by myself, dealing with the happy client, leaving, blah, 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 super basic. But I probably wouldn't have approached him like just because. So when he introduced us to him, at first I was like, okay, cool, you know, what do you do? And he was asking me vice versa. And I was like, oh, okay. And um, I had mentioned that I do the YouTube. Well, actually my girlfriend mentioned he has a YouTube channel. And she, he's like, oh, like, what are your analytics? And I was like, oh, I don't know that. And then we started talking about analytics and like ways to kind of boost everything. And then he was talking about Facebook and he mentioned a few things about the ads that I thought were really interesting. So the biggest one was you can look up the tag that you're looking for. So junk removal for us. And you can look at top trending ads. And then from there, look at what their style ad is. Is it a video ad? It, like, is the video talking about something specific? Is it very minimalist when it like the wording? Is it more lengthy? Is there a discount? Is there a promo listed right off the back? What's the title of it? Does the title match the video or the picture perfectly? Look at it and then mimic it to your own and just adjust the wording a little bit. But there's a good chance that if that's a top trending ad, it's for a reason. And you can try to convert that to yourself. So it's a little bit of like a cheat sheet. And then I don't remember where I first heard it from, but that's also a tactic to use for just marketing in general when it comes to looking at like the bigger franchises. So for example, let's say we're looking at 1-800. If they put out a specific ad and you notice that like that's a continuous thing for them, like they really focus on let's say video ads and they like to keep the title simple and catching. And then the description is like real quick to the point, like got junk here, give us a call versus putting like a whole paragraph in and they're always getting really good engagement and their target audience. Like you can look at comments and get an idea of who their target audience is and then just kind of follow whatever they do, you know, basically copy their marketing strategy because here's the thing, they have a huge budget. They have professional marketers that are the best of the best to supplement that huge budget that are putting in the most top tier work to then bring them the best business. So if it's working for them, it's probably gonna work for you as well. I think the only thing that alters junk removal is location. So that's just something to kind of always keep in mind. So I thought that was a really good tip with trying to look up like the top trending ads and then basically just kind of copy over. And then when I was talking to the marketer, I was trying to focus a little bit more about her and kind of getting to know her personally versus like what her profession is because marketing is pretty straightforward. So I was trying to build more of that personal connection but she mentioned that the most important thing she finds to be, cause she likes to work with small startup businesses is to make sure that your roadmap is very geared towards your goals, like your end result goals. So like everyone who starts a business obviously wants to build their clientele. They want to get more money. They want to get more volume, but what's your end result? You know, do you want to be making, you know, a hundred thousand a year, 500, a million a year. Do you want to be pulling in 30,000 a month? Do you want to open up multiple franchises? Do you want to have a fleet of like five, 10 trucks? Do you want to stay small and just have a couple guys run for you so you can better your scheduling? You know, what's your result and your goal? So that way you can plug in the steps necessary to get there. And that way you're, it's easier to stay on track and really focus on what you want to achieve instead of just, ah, I just want to get more business and you're just all over the place. You know, it's like casting a really broad net, hoping you catch something. Whereas if you were to focus on one specific area and put all of your effort towards it, how more likely are you to pull more valuable connections out of that? So I found that to be a little bit of a reminder and then also a little bit more eye-opening too that she was so heavily focused on that specifically out of everything else. 
So definitely uh, useful information. And then the realtor mentioned to me, because we were just kind of talking about YouTube and just overall South Florida things. He mentioned to me at these events, he finds it best to really just talk to everybody. Because like I mentioned with that videographer, I wouldn't have talked to him before. So if you can just walk up to everybody and say, hey, you know, introduce yourself, you're probably gonna find a few select people that really shine into what you need and or want. So I can meet 10 people, maybe two of them are accountants. You know, okay, I don't really have a need for that, I already have an accountant. Maybe two of them have construction companies. Okay, cool, but if they do commercial, it's a little bit out of my, you know, a little bit too far away from me. I don't deal with that much construction. You know, maybe one of them runs a handyman business. That's a little bit out more of my, you know, that's a little bit more of my alley there. And then, you know, maybe one of them does restoration where they do water damage and mold damage and, you know, fire damage. Okay, you know, I can go and haul away all the furniture. So it's really just the more people you meet, they're not all probably going to have a personal connection with you in terms of business, but there's a good chance that they're going to be able to push something towards you. And I also like that when you're building that personal connection, that accountant I have no need for right now, but... If he likes me as a person, he wants me to succeed, maybe he's gonna refer me out to one of his construction clients. He's not gonna get anything out of it. He just wants to give me business. So the more you can meet, the more opportunity you have, and then the more you can seize. So hopefully that wasn't too mumbo jumbled. I am getting sleepy <laughs> um, and I have a lot going on today. So I was trying to be pretty precise with stuff, but I don't know, but Hopefully you found some helpful content in there and I will probably see you guys on Sunday. We are going to be doing a storage job and I have a lot of things kind of lined up throughout the month and April. So some interesting fun things, definitely going to be some full loads coming up and I do have a few topics I want to discuss as well regarding sales and communication that I've been learning over the last couple of months that I think are really helping me out. So of course, anything I learn, I try to push out there for any of you who are starting off to learn as well, because I am in the same boat. You know, I'm just documenting my ups and downs as a business owner. So that is it for me. Hope you guys are having a great March. Comment down, what is your main long-term goal? Like what's your end result? You know, do you want to have franchises? Do you want to just have a fleet? Do you just want to keep it small to a few guys so you can really have a handle on everything that's going on? What is your end result? Comment it down below. And then go ahead and add on to that comment. What are you directly doing to get to that point? Are you really honed in on marketing? Are you just trying to build your reputation with certain industries? You know, are you just focused on word of mouth? You know, what is it that you're doing to reach that end goal? So comment that down below and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.